Hi. Hey, how are you? Okay, thank you. As far as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't sound like you're in a bad mood, but now I realize why you're in a bad mood. I, I, I can totally tell when you get negative, like yesterday, but I didn't know why. And no, I didn't. I did not get that. Whatever time you emailed me Friday, I yeah. just assumed, obviously incorrectly, that you got out of everything. And by the way, you missed a great second trade here. I called in GE that's going, and you signed out right away. And you and you could have done it. This is this is good. This is good. It's working. It's near the low. What's that? GE. GE. I called this in the room this morning, and it, it looks great. I mean, this is. I mean, so I'm watching this here while I'm with you here now, but. You're, as soon as the first trade, if it doesn't work, you just sign right out. Well, the problem I've got is uh, I'm trading so small now that it's, you know, I take a loss. You called the SPY. The SPY was out of my price range anyway. So well, then, well, then why did you no sign point. out? Then you could have done GE. Then you could have done it. Well, yes, there was nothing really that stood out that, so I just thought there's no point me being there. I thought I might as well concentrate on the options, which is what I did. Um, but like you say, I mean, I should have been out. I should have been out from last week. I mean, I... I, I <laughs> okay, so I, you did get out of some of the trades though Friday. Yes or no? Or you yeah. didn't get out of anything or what? Yes, I, I took 50% off the table. 50% um, of every trade or what? By cutting... What I said to you, I had um, eight thousand. Yeah, uh, I cut fifty percent of that basically. So, so you got you you had all the trades still on queues. Well, queues you could have got out then up today. I mean, then then you had the queues on. Were you in everything or what? The the queues was the only one that I didn't take. I took the spy. Okay. Um, I got out of that a little too soon. Okay. Um, the same with Google. I took that a little bit too soon. Okay. But then again, it was profit, and I let Netflix run. And that was the problem. I shouldn't have let it run. I did think that it would open and it would continue on Monday morning, then turn back. It didn't. It right. opened and it felt like a break. Right, but I gave a lecture on that, and again, you weren't there. You signed out. Look at the chart of Netflix and, and tell me what you did wrong first. Um, Besides the fact that you're up a million dollars and you didn't get out. Well, uh, that's the obvious thing. Yeah, I mean, I should have taken the money and gone to the bank with it, definitely, on the Friday and not bothered with the following day. But I did think it was going. That's why I left it. No, that's Got, fine. Ah. That's fine. It gapped up Monday morning. Into the open Monday morning when you watched it, it what, 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 what were you up? Well, in, in yes, it, it did. Yes, I probably will have been up a little bit, but it, it wouldn't have been up very long. But I've had that before. We had that in Google once where the stock gapped up on earnings and it was very good. It didn't reflect it in the option and it collapsed. This was a very similar situation. Okay, okay. all right. I'm, I'm, I want to get to a point I'm trying to make here, though. Okay, then we go back to Friday where you have plenty of time to think. To I'm looking through. at it. Friday, well, how much money were you up between after three, three o'clock, three o'clock Friday, you're sitting there, you're like, duh, 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 duh. you're emailing me, what were you up in this trade? Oh, 3,000. Okay, so in your mind, how much had you risked for that? <laughs> for the, how much had you taken it? <laughs> I'd rather not say. <laughs> no, just, I mean, come on, I'm trying to help you here. A thousand, I, I, two I thousand, you are, three thousand? In, you are recording this. I know, but I mean, this is, you, you, this, You've got to be accountable for stuff that you're doing, and it does help you because you can listen to it back. So what did you risk? I don't, I don't know if you're trying to make a point you risked a lot or risked a little. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I risked 3000 Oh, you risked 3000 So you were up 100%. So in your mind, what were you trying to get out of it? So if you had flipped it around one, what were you trying to get out of it? You see, I'm not looking at this in monetary terms, which is probably ah! why. Ah, uh, you see, I know <laughs> this is our conversations previously. I know, I'm but it's not sticking in with I'm, you. Okay, I'm go looking ahead. At the chart. I'm looking at the chart. The chart so looks are... great. It is going to go not, like the dickens. But, I mean, you still Mondays can't predict bar everything. Off. Not, huh? not Monday's bar off. And you look at the run-up, the way it ran up, those three on those three green bars. Mm -hmm. It pulled back slightly. Mm -hmm. It was off again. Mm -hmm. 
I did think that we would have a slight pullback on Monday, not as much as we did, and then continue. I don't it's know what you're talking about further. about pullbacks. If the stock opened gapping up, if it would pull back, it would look like this now. So if you were thinking it was going to do that, I don't know why you didn't get out. I don't know why you didn't get out Friday or right away is Monday. If you really thought that, there was nowhere to go to pull back except for where it is. This is the smallest, babyest pullback it could be doing, by the way, which just proves how strong the stock is. But if uh, somebody's going to pull back, it's not going to... If this would have held, it wouldn't have pulled back. So first of all, stop trying to predict pullbacks. Play what's happening. If you're seeing this and you're seeing, forget forget about the money for a second, although I want to go back to that. If you're seeing, this is what I talked about in the room. Pull up the one minute chart of Netflix from yesterday. Just pull it up. Look at it. I'm not going to even show you mine. Just look at it. Netflix. Yes. The one minute chart into the open yesterday, Netflix. 312. Yeah. Into the open. Yes. Okay, so so say you were a day trader and you were day trading Netflix, what would you have wanted to go long right there? No. Okay. So based on that. You would have, you would say you were in it long, which you were, you would have seen that and you would have said, Ugh. you would have said something to yourself. You had yeah. time to get out of that, not with $3,000 probably, but 2,700, 2,500, 2,600, 2,400, 2,800, whatever it was. You, you had time to look, watch a trade, get an order out, get filled with profit before it fell off a cliff really quick. When you were, when it was there, and if you're, if you go, if if you, I said this in the room in the morning, and you missed it. If you are in something, and it goes in your favor, in your favor overnight, I don't care if it's the market, I don't care if it's Netflix, Google, Amazon, anything, anything that's going in your favor. If it's as if it's a short, if it's a long, if it's whatever, if it's in your, it's going into your favor in the gap where you're up more money into the open. You better watch that sucker into the open to see if it's setting up that day as a trade you take as a new trade. Because if it's not, then it could do something that tells you, you got to get out of it. And Netflix clearly told you in the first 15 minutes of the day and definitely the first 30 minutes and really even the first five that really you should have gotten out of it. That it was okay to hold it. It was actually okay to hold it because it still could have gone up and the market went up yesterday. But I'm telling you then you got to watch it. And that's what you did wrong. I really don't even have a problem with you holding it because Netflix is so strong. But the point is, though, that you didn't watch it and you do this all the time and you say to hell with it, to hell with everything. I may as well no, lose all my no, gains no. and lose it all. And that's what I, you did. I, I, I don't say that. Well, then why but do you get yes. out? Why do you get out? But to answer your question, yes, I, I wasn't watching the chart. Unfortunately, and this has happened previously, I've been looking at the day trades. And to be quite honest, I'm just thinking of, Stopping the day trades because they are they're cutting into my concentration. That's not option. true. Much That's an excuse. Important. That's an excuse. The only reason it's you want to stop it is an excuse. Not. You the only reason you want to do that is because you're not happy with the size you're taking with the day tradings. That's the only reason you want to stop doing it. And if no, you would be not. booking these prop, you are not in that many options that you should be. If this should be taking away from what you're doing, you I'm not calling that many. I don't know what you're doing on your own, but you should not have any point of taking away from day trading from doing the options it's supposed to make you more money by doing both you should not and will not have to watch all of these trades every single day i'm not calling that many but if you're in something then you gotta watch it if you see you're up a lot but that's not every day it's not even two days a week unless you're in all kinds of things that you've been told me which i don't think you are but god only knows you should not need to even watch those. But something like this, you would have needed to because it was up, up, up. Just like if you had been in Amazon. If you had been in Amazon, which I'll pull up here and look at that one. Actually, yeah. can you see my charts here? I don't know if I said it, you can see it. No, um, I can't see your charts, no. All right, hold um, on here. Yeah, but you, Go ahead. Um, it's, the, problem, the problem is... You're making excuses yes, about the day I, trading because no, you're trading small no, size. I guess I, I know didn't. you. I know you. Stop. I know you. I know, you just, do. <laughs> I, I know the way you are.
are, you don't want to be bothered with something if it's not big size. But this just goes to show you, you're trading big size. You risk three grand in Netflix, which is big size, and you still can't manage it right. So what does it have to do with anything? If, if you were six grand in this, you wouldn't have managed it right. You have to correct this problem. You must correct this problem. 2018, this is your year. You have to correct it. I'm not sure, though, what it's going to take for you to correct it. But I know one thing. When this started dropping, I want an answer why you didn't get out of it. With money. Why? As you say, I wasn't watching it. You weren't watching it I, at I, all? I, I wasn't watching it. No, I should have seen it. And yes, in hindsight, looking at it now, I should have got out of it. As what soon do you mean? 10.15 you, you were watching it? 10.30 you were watching it? You didn't look at this at all yesterday until the middle of the afternoon? Is that what you're no, saying? No, 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 no. No, I'll rephrase that. I, I've got it on another screen at the day trade platform on the other screen. So... And you see where it goes on, on the daily bar. But I didn't, and obviously a lot of the time, these things close, don't they? The gaps actually close, and then it continues. It sits on support, and then off it goes again. Yes, this, and that could very well do that. That could very well do it, but you're running out of days, and you, you're running out of days, oh, and you're up a lot. Oh, I know. That's, That's why, the problem. yes, I made the big mistake. I should have been out on Friday. I realize that. I like a week in hand. Because it gets gets to today, and the price just collapses. There's nothing that you know. It moves so quick. You still didn't answer my question. Why you didn't look at this trade until yesterday afternoon? Well, I, I did, but I didn't think it was going to come back so far. But it doesn't <laughs> matter if you are looking at it. And you're now. This is you've got to have rules. I tell you, when you're up three grand. And all of a sudden you're up fifteen hundred. You you better get out. So you can't let a hundred percent of your gains. I have today. A hundred percent of your, but you can't let your gains get away from you. This is what I'm saying. Like if yes. you have to watch even your gains, you can't let all of your gains go. Turn, first of all, you can't let your gains turn into complete losses. And second of all, you can't let all of your gains go away. If you didn't watch this in the first five minutes or the first half an hour because you were day trading fine, when you you have to check your positions. If you, you don't, you can check them every day at ten o'clock. That's fine. But even at ten o'clock, if you would check this, I don't think it would have been. It wouldn't have been completely flipped around. You would have been able to get out of this with something, and and then it really fell hard. Obviously after lunch. But the point yeah. was, you still have to check it. You have to check it. It's not that you have to do everything in the world with it. You have to have it somewhere and check it somewhere between 9.30 and 10.15, 10.30. You gotta look at your positions if you have positions on and you have to look at them and you can't let all your gains get away from you. You, you know, I don't have a problem with you holding this into Monday. The, the chart looked great. No one could have predicted that there would have been whatever news that came out or somebody talking on some channel, whatever. But when you watch it and you see it starts to fall away from you, then you gotta throw an order out. And I just don't believe that you didn't look at this at all yesterday. I believe you looked at it and saw it down from where you were up. And I believe you thought what you just said, that it was going to come in and hold somewhere. And then as it kept going and going and going and going, I know you and you say to hell with it. So what did you end no, up doing I, with no, it? I don't, no, I don't say to hell with it. Well, what did you do with it? The money does matter to me. It but should matter I, to you. The money should matter to you. This is what I'm saying. That's what I just said. The money does matter to me. Oh, okay. It does. All right, good. Well, yes, then, well, yes, what did you do? It does matter. It matters incredibly to me. And what uh, did you do? In fact, it's becoming more so mattering to me. But at the same time, you have to point to balance what you're actually seeing on the chart and what that's telling you the next move is going to be. Or no, you're, 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 to be. this is where you're going like crazy town. When the, I call the trade. And the tr you look at the trait and you see it and you say, yeah, boom, this is a good one. And you take it. Then you have it on. You decide if you're going to kill it. If it's down half, you decide if you're going to run it out. Say it goes up immediately. You're up right away. So it takes a day, whatever. Then it goes. Then you're up. You have to have parameters because even though I'm predicting it's going to go here and they go, you still can't predict where it's going to go every second that it's breathing. Is this still going to continue higher? The answer is yes. But for whatever reason, yesterday, after it gapped up, even though the market held, this fell. And so you have to have parameters where at some point the money does have to come into the equation. And that's where it, it's you're not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. After the trade is on, you got to know, and you should know yes. before you take the trade, actually, where yes. are you going to get out? And you're two looking at the up. chart. Two days up. Moves two days. Okay, did it had, so it, it had the second day up in the gap. That was it. it 
Yeah, I mean that that Friday was the day. It, that was it. I was no, that's that wasn't even it. Thing. This has been up for seven thousand days. I don't even know what you mean two days up. That the, the, this this moved. This has been moving, 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 moving. I mean, not every trade that I call is going to be a five day move. I mean, no, I don't even know where you're getting that. that you know? it, but um, I mean, after a slight retrace, which is what it did with that one small red, red bar and then the, the large green bar on the Friday, I expected more of a move. Why? Um, Why? Why did at, you expect I, that? Why? I mean, look at the chart. Look at Why? Amazon. Amazon's huh? a classic example. I had two contracts in Amazon, and I took it at the target that you said at uh, 160. My target was 170, was 1574. You mean 1560? I'm giving yeah, you all the targets. I didn't say it wasn't going to go past there. For one, I gave that as the first target. The fact yes. that you chose to go out is fine. You were up money, but that was the first target. I never said it wasn't going to go past there at all. You, you're not consistent. Take every trade out of the first target. Take every trade out when you're up. Take every trade if it comes back and you're down half. Hold every trade to the dream target. Pick a side. Get in a lane. You're you're doing everything different, and your and your results all over the place. And it is painful to see you be up this kind of money and then not get out. And I really thought you got out. I swear to God, I thought you got out. And I just, I mean, I don't even know why I'm surprised. I, how did you get out of this? Then you got out of it with a loss. I bet, didn't you? I I just. Yeah. Ugh. When you saw this yesterday and you started, it started depleting itself, why didn't you just throw an order out and say, oh my God, 500 bucks, I'll take it, anything, anything. Why didn't you do that? Because different options on the different times erode at a different rate. This eroded faster than what I anticipated. Hence, I took a partial loss in it, which obviously I deemed to have done. Okay, that still didn't answer my question. When you saw this was down, 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 falling, falling, falling on the chart and the options train, and you were up three grand, and then you weren't, why didn't you throw an order out to get out with profit? Um, that's a good question. I mean, um, these are the things that you got to get your head on straight about. Like, it, these are split second decisions that sometimes you got to make. Because if you don't happen to be watching it, and then you go and you see the screen pop up, you say, oh my gosh, crap. I'm only up 700 bucks in this now. What's going on? Quick, I'll look at the chart. Oh my gosh, it's 50% retraced yesterday's green bar. The market is red and it's not going higher yet today. I don't know what's gonna happen. I can't let this whole thing go against me. I don't wanna take a $3,000 loss in this. I'm gonna get out with something. If it sets up again, I'll retake it. That's what should be going through your head. Maybe not in 30 seconds, but at least in a minute or two or five, because the, these can move so quick. As fast as they can go up, they can go down. Yeah, they can. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I just, yes, I should have looked at it in a different way. And I didn't. Um, I thought that it would pull back a little bit and then go off it, again. It did. It is going to. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, but you have the I, option it will be interesting Friday. to see what happens from now and whether it breaks over that high again from now. I don't think that's going to happen this week. It's Tuesday. No, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it could be a little longer than a week before it goes over. I think we could be coming back further. It doesn't we'll even see. matter. The trade right now is done, and it was, oh, it was the trade. It was done after Friday. Yeah. It was done. That was it. Friday, No, it was you could have got out of it Monday morning. You could have got yes. out of it Monday morning. Yes, yes, I could have got out of it Monday morning. It could have gone higher Monday. You could have. You don't know. Because the market didn't. This didn't. But trust me, if the market had, this would have too. So, mm. you know, you don't know. Somebody says something on TV, some news happens, that is something you can't predict. But the chart's telling you that it had a good move, it had the pop, it broke out, it's going to continue higher, but you can't predict when. And, and stop predicting pullbacks anyways, I told you that. I think that you've been doing better overall, taking profits this year. But this one here, I, you know... It seems to be, and this is why it's, you know, I just know you. It's, you want to say, well, I'll, I'd will i do better if I had bigger size, but you've proven that you don't. I think that if, you know, the, the Zen trader, I talked to her, she's take, she's doing great because she's doing one contract in every one. I mean, I almost think you'd be better if, if you had less size. I mean, you know, I'd like to see you make, you know, three grand on a three grand trade or whatever, but I don't want to see you lose three grand when you're up three grand because you really lost six. You lost six grand. 
Because you risked three and you were up three, you lost $6,000. And, and you, when you think of it like that, because that was a reality, you had $3,000 and you put 3000 on, you really lost $6,000. And when you're up money like that, that's how you have to look at it. You have to say, oh my gosh, this is 6000 Anytime you're in these options trades, if you risk four and you're up four, guess what? You're really, you could, you could lose eight. The four that you're up and the four that you have risk. And you've done that yes. before. And you just did it now. You're just looking and you're saying, oh, that's 100%. Actually, 100% is great. But either way, even, even, in, even in the day trades, I'm telling you, the way that you have to think about risk is like, really, you're really risking what you risk plus what you're up if you don't get out. And then you say, wow, 6,000, I, I would like 6,000. Because right now today, if you added six grand to your account, that's actually what you'd have in your account. If I don't know if you took the full loss in this, but I'm saying that's what it amounts to. You would have $6,000 more cash, the money that you put on as a risk, and then the profit that you were up, you could add six grand onto that account and you'd be happier. You'd be in a better mood right now today if you had six grand more in there. And you that was real. Yeah, you're telling me I would. <laughs> well, I know. That's what I'm saying. You have to. You're just looking at. You're saying, oh, it's only three thousand. No, it's really well, six. No, no, no. There's not only three thousand. It is three thousand. Well, exactly. It's not only. It's not only anything. You know, I, it is value. There is value in it. No, I didn't take the full loss, by the way. All right. I, well, then that's. I got yeah, out good. before it went. I mean, it could have tanked. It could have continued. And I do, like I say, I do wonder how far it's going to go, which way now as well. No, don't I'm wonder, sure. don't care. It doesn't matter. There's no re There's no new trade in here. Just let it be. You do this to yourself too. Then you second guess the decisions that you made or you'll jump back into this thing right here. I don't see anything right now with this. Let this be. The market is red right now today. I didn't expect that, but who knows? Wait. I mean, you know, sometimes you just, it's okay not to be doing a trade. You're wanting to be so active in these options. The day trade no, is the active No, things. no, I'm specific. Uh, please don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I am very specific in the trades that I take, even on your trades, and hence the ones that I have taken and the ones I haven't at yeah. certain times. There is a reason for that. Right. Which is why you, you pressed me in your webinar the other night as to why I can't explain it in, in, in something like that. But there was a reason behind it. And it's because of the time that we're in at the moment. It's a very unstable time. Hence, you get the moves that you get. So, but that's good. And, that's good yeah. to make money. But you still have to capture the gains when you're up. And you do. You, you still exactly. have to capture yes. the gains when you're up. And I think one of the biggest challenges for you is that you're not consistent. I've said it all along. And, 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 and I think that you're still trying to chase this big dream trade out of nowhere. If you made, if you made 100% on every trade that you took which I'm calling a lot of good trades. I mean, some of them aren't working, but a lot of them are. And a lot of them are going 100%, and a lot of them are going more. If you would manage to book 100% turnaround on all the ones that I've called, and even risk three grand, you, I mean, you would be doing phenomenal. So you're just not consistent with what you're doing. And I just don't know which side of the fence to tell you to be on, but I know you got to pick a side, and then you have to stick with it. And you can't be upset if you get out quick, if Amazon goes 100 points over, and if you hold it, and it falls like Netflix, and you can't be upset too. Because see if, see, see, if you had held Amazon, it wouldn't have mattered if Netflix went bust. If you had got out of Amazon quick and Netflix in oh, the yes. day, then you would have been fine too. Do you see how you did the oh, opposite absolutely. of both and picked the wrong ones, which inevitably happens when you're not consistent? I know. It's quite ironic. I was hold, I, I've been holding Facebook and Netflix. I sold out the spy options and I sold out uh, Amazon and I sold out Google. Yeah, I don't know what and this is going to happen with this here. This has and to do with the market. The ones that did go yeah. is Facebook. I took half a loss on Facebook as well. I killed that's, okay. As well. that's okay. That's okay because if this, if this doesn't work out, which I still remains to be seen, it still could. But if it doesn't, it will set up again. So that's fine. But again, the consistency, boom, 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 boom. You have to be consistent with it. Where are you getting out? You're not consistent with your exits. You're also, I, not, I, you know, go ahead. I, I, I try to be. I try to be consistent, but obviously I in this you situation, were. I thought 
that you were. I thought you were doing better with it. She looks really good. I thought you were doing better with it, but 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 now you went off the rails. You went off the rails, and I know why. You went off the rails because I've been talking about Netflix. It's so, so strong. It's one of the strongest things in the market, and you went off the rails because it only had one day, and you thought it would keep going, and you also went off the rails because you risked three grand. You risked three grand, and then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to make 10 grand on this one trade. I know. No. No, I was well, looking at the have. chart. You might have. I was looking at the chart. It only moved. I mean, I can't remember which day we took it. I think it might have been the I called second. it on Thursday. How was it? On the Thursday. Right. I think I took it, and I, I think I must have taken it at the, probably the highest point of the day. That's the worst okay. time. That's okay. It doesn't matter. So obviously it pulls in. And this was another reason why I haven't straight away been cutting them back, because you can get in at a bad price. And then you can find that it pulls back within to your price. But that's okay. You oh, still should only oh, risk what you're willing to so lose. So you cut it at 50% on the first day. And then it goes on the second day. So you can see my problem. It, it all depends as well on where you are with that. Here, it doesn't matter. You have to take a risk that you're more comfortable with then. You give yourself some wiggle room. You're giving yourself no wiggle room. I'm looking at this Netflix chart. And although yep. you're right, it could have continued for three days after, I don't see that that would have necessarily happened. You didn't email me what to do with this. I assumed you got out. I think everyone did but two people and you. The point is, though, that I don't know where you're getting from this chart, that this would have had another three, four, five, six-day run. I, I mean, I'm just not where you're getting it. It ran up three days. Then it came in for two. Then it popped. I don't, well, I, just, mean, I, I mean. Just the nature of the chart. It's slowly climbing, slowly pulling back, and then taking off again. This, this, these last two, the Friday and today, it's pulled back more than it has done in the whole move up from the ninth. I know, but what does this have to do with anything? I'm still looking at it, and I'm saying take away today and yesterday. I don't know where right. you would have seen that necessarily that this would have gone higher. There would be no way to really say that other than the market lifting it, which it didn't really happen yesterday or today. I'm saying that this stock had a big move, a big move in the first week of March, and then it really didn't pull back at all. It rested, it rested, and it popped. So, I mean, when you look at something like this, you say – Amazon doesn't look anything like this, by the way. Amazon doesn't look anything like this whatsoever. I'll tell you exactly what Amazon's done. Amazon Amazon's gonna had, had a move way back in the middle of February. Then it rested, 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 and it rested and it gapped up every day. It made a slow climb. And then it had a nice, steady, easy move. Doop a doop a doop a doop. This really okay. hasn't had a monster move. If you look at it overall, it hasn't been monstrous. If, I mean, if you look at the numbers, it is, but really on the days, on the live days, on the trading, it hasn't been monstrous. So this might have continued today if it wouldn't have been for the market, but who knows? But really, this is not the same kind of look of a chart as Netflix. Netflix has had nice, smooth, solid green bar days with moves. Amazon really hasn't. It's kind of made some really weird moves in the gaps, but it's still been very profitable if you've traded it right. The fact that you didn't hold it was fine, but again, you weren't consistent. You got out of that quick and held the other one. Get out of both of them quick when you're up or hold them both. Either way, if you had done that, you would have been fine with one of these. But say you had done this. Say you had been in it. Say you had been up in this here today and the strike was 1550. You'd still be up now, 40 points through the strike. Say you were still in the train. The, if you see this drop today, would you stay with it and say, oh, it's going to turn around, it's going to go back? No, it expires Friday. You see something's not working. You see it's not buying through. You see it up a lot of money. You see it's over the strike, which Netflix was too, even yesterday morning. You have to, at some point, use good money management and make a decision and watch what's happening the live day and decide to get out. You have a problem with exiting trades. It's been your problem for the last two years or longer, and it's nothing to do with your day trading. You're making that as an excuse. It has nothing to do with that. You want to focus on this because you think you can make a crap load of money doing it. And I'm not saying that you can't, <laughs> but if you mismanage them, then you can lose. So really, the day yes. trading is like chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. If you could build that day trading account up and still do this, you'd be great. And I think your eye is more trainable when you're looking at that. Because if you had looked at that, these trades, like they were day trades, you would have known exactly what to do. Because that's what yes. I would have done. But yes. you didn't look at them like that. I taught you how to read the one-minute chart. And if you would be looking at these options trades, when you're up a crap load of money into the open, you look at it the way I taught you how to read it, and you know how to do it, and you would say, ugh, get out. And you would just take it, and you would take the gains out, or you would get out with a loss if you saw it doing something too. Yes. Yes. You are right uh, with that. Yes. 
that but day I, I do think yes, you can make a couple sharp. of different doing options. Yes. What did you say? I do believe you can make more money doing the options definitely than the day trades. The, the, the time and effort is far more. It's not more. really more. It's just in the. It's just in the. It's just it per trade you're looking at it. it yeah, but know, there's too many variables out there in the well, in, in day trading. Every time. Your platform works. You get hit into the right price. I mean, most of the time, my figures sit on my screen and I can hit the key on time and it just doesn't doesn't fill me. Well, that I don't you know. You get put into an option. Yeah. You get put into an option and you're in it and that you, away you go for the run. And it's you're not just, as precise, is it? No, you're just looking at yourself where you're you're saying, if you take five five day trades, it equals sometimes what one good option is, but it's all the same thing because you don't get options every day. You don't get options every day. You'd have to risk an absurd amount in every option to be able to have this work out for you as enough as the only thing that you did. And you're not at that point yet. And you're really not at that point because your money management just isn't there anyways. But your eye stays sharp with the day trading. It's just stretched out. You're doing more trades. You may not make $3,000 in a day trade. But the only reason is because you're not risking $1,500 in the trades. The good trades I've called, you could have made some of that in that. You're not doing it because you're not risking $3,000. you are not risking $1,500. And you're not because you can't. You have to get that account build up and when you sign out of the room two minutes into the day or five minutes into the day and i call a great trading ge you're not i mean you're not going to get anything you're going to miss lectures you're going to miss trades if i call a late trade which this was and is and this is this looks great i think it's going to break the low anyways the point is though that i don't i don't i need you to start doing better with your money management and that's why i said i take a couple minutes to talk to you today and we we talk now for half an hour but i really 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 need you to start focusing on what's happening with the price action when you're up a lot in these you are thinking the chart and the day chart and you're looking at it but you've got to combine everything together money management day chart what's happening with the market what's the one minute chart doing into the open is it gapping up is it holding it or is it collapsing you know, I mean, you really lost six grand or whatever, whatever it was. If you look at it that way, I know you said you didn't take a full loss, but it really it's a hundred percent flip around the profit plus the loss. And that's really how you have to look at it because that that's, that's the money you put on, you invested in the trade that you don't have now anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Plus the gains. I do. I do. Yes, I do. I mean, yes, looking at Netflix at 10 o'clock, it turned well, it was after 10, actually. It was, um, what time will that be? You were still it was ten, Yeah, 10.06. It, yeah. it turned. It turned and then fell again. So it rose back to 10 and then collapsed. You can't tell me looking at that one minute chart, there's anything there that looks like that was going to hold. I looked at it in the room. We talked about it. You missed the lecture. I'm going to go back and look at it. I mean, pull it up. There's everything I taught you was right in there that said, would have said, eh. you would have never gone along that. I mean, it, it, literally. Literally. No, I wouldn't have gone along it. I'm not looking at it. I'm, I'm looking at what's telling you that that's going to continue. Yes, it bounced. It, it, it dropped at 9.54. It bottomed out. Then it took off again and it's turned at six minutes past 10. Then it continued on the downward trend for that no, day. No, 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 no. This was kaputsy. Really, if I had been watching this, and again, it's so hard to go back. I didn't watch this on the open. I probably would have said, sell it. Sell it right now after 9.30. Right. And if not, I would have said for sure by 9.32. Right. You're not, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to rationalize looking at this and then the bigger picture in the chart. But I, this, you, you read this wrong. I got to be honest with you. For the day chart, this stock has had a move, move, move. It rested. It did not pull back for two days last week, Wednesday, Thursday. And then it popped. It popped. It was more like a pop than a rally. Then it just poof, it popped like a like a bubble that burst. It was like a it was like a lucky trade. I mean, the stock was higher, but it really popped. And that's where you got that balloon effect of the option chain, which makes it be worth so much so quick. You get up in the morning, you were down, and all of a sudden, woo, it's running, 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 running to the moon. And everyone's thinking what you're thinking. It's going to go to 350. It's going to go to 400. I think somebody in the room said 400. I mean, well, everyone thinks that then. That's why then the option chain goes, woo. But then, well, you do when it closed yeah. the way it closed. And then you think, all right, and it gaps open again. 
And you think, oh, it's going again. And it's just pulling back. You wouldn't have thought that after if you would have watched the one minute chart. You wouldn't have thought that if you watched the one minute chart, number one. And number two, if you have money management, not knowing how you go into the weekend with one week left and not knowing the market and what it's going to do, which I think could happen. Not knowing that, you have to say common sense rules the day. I'm up $3,000. I'm going to get out. I'm out by $1,000 for the day. I'm going to take it all. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to have an amazing weekend. I'm going to say one more thing to you and I'm going to let you go. One of the things that I thought about this today, and I wanted to tell you this, which I'm glad I thought we're talking today because I didn't think of this last night. The, you, this isn't fun for you anymore. You've lost the funness about it. You used to love to trade, used to love to read charts, used to love to do it. Somewhere it's along the way, this isn't fun for you anymore and I, you gotta get it back. Doing TV right now for me is so much fun. I absolutely love it. There's so, when you're doing something that it's fun, it makes it so much better. And you used to love to trade, read charts, make money, do all the things. Somewhere along the way, this has become a big stress ball for you. So now even when you're up, it's stressful because you don't know what to do and you're trying yes. to make a decision. The fun has gone out of this for you and you got to get the fun back. If you can find a way to make trading fun for yourself again, which I think it is fun. And I think you still think it's fun too in some part inside of you, but it's like the fun part has gone away so that even when something amazing happens, it's it's like not enough now for you because really Friday was an amazing day for you. And then you didn't t- you didn't capitalize on it. You didn't you didn't you didn't lock it in. You didn't lock yes, it down. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's fun making the money. It's fun booking the money. It's fun if money, you get out. Providing you book the money um, rather than trying to pick a target, think where it's going, and follow you. You made through. making money stressful now. When you're up, you stress out. You stress out more when you're up than someone that I've seen that loses. That's what I'm saying. You stressed out, I'm sure, at some point on Friday. You sat for an hour or half an hour or thought about getting out, emailed me, tried to look at the chart, we're trying to predict where it would go, and you didn't know what to do, and then you ended up holding it, and you thought yeah. you made the right decision. But, but you know, the, the fun part was making the money. The fun part was taking the trade and having it be down on Thursday and then all of a sudden be up so much. The fun part is saying, oh my gosh, can you believe this works so great? What amazing. The fun part is risking three grand and making three grand. The fun part is looking at the chart and even knowing that you could do that at all, even for one day. The fun part, you got to get back to trading because you miss the, you're missing the fun part. You've lost the fun part of it. And until you get that back, even when you're up, you're, you, you don't think of it like happy, happy fun. You yes. think of it even as stress. Should I get out or should I hold it? And, and then, you, then like you were complaining about Amazon and you got out of that with money. That's crazy. Well, no, no, hang on, I'm not complaining. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you did. You complained. You complained here. You complained in the room. You said, I got out too early. I got out too early. I got out too early. You made at least $1,000, did yes, you? Yes, but it's like I've said to you before. When something goes and it continues to go, you have to capitalize on the ones that work so that they compensate but for the ones that don't. But you're not going to in every one if you don't hold everyone to big. And if you don't hold everyone to big and you get out early, then you better get out of all of them early, which you didn't do with Netflix. Make a decision. Pick a cho- choose a lane. I'm saying to you, if you I think it, if you I think did. the fun, I chose to hold Netflix. No, you got to choose. It was the wrong decision. No, you have to decide what you're doing to be consistent with all of them. If you think the most fun thing is to hold every trade to the hundred point move, go for it. Hold them all. Hold them all. Then you would have gotten this. But the point is that you can't have to be consistent. Boom, boom, boom. Have to be consistent. Either you're killing all when you're down half and retaking them, or you're holding them all, and if they go, they go, and you're positive, you get out. Or you're holding them for the quick moves, and you're getting out of the whole thing, or getting out of half, you're holding them all for the big move. You can't pick and choose. First of all, you should be doing all the trades, you didn't do the cues, and that was, you, even you could've get out of the cues today and still been up, so you should've done them all. But even way, even still, you need to be consistent with the ones that you're doing and you're not, and you weren't even happy with this. You see where the joy is gone. The joy is lost. You should have been like, yay, I made a thousand bucks on Amazon. And you should be laughing like, oh my God, this is crazy. I could have made 10 grand if I'd held it. You should have been like, damn it, damn it all. I got out of this too early. It's all your fault for telling me the first target. You, you, you see how all the fun is gone from you. All yes. the fun and the happiness and the, you know, the looking at this and saying, oh my gosh, can you believe that it went, it went, 60 points to the strike. You know, I mean, get the fun back. The fun, right. the fun of doing it. If you're going to hold it, hold them all and make it fun. If you're going to get yes. out of them, make booking the money fun. 
choose what is the most what's the most fun for you are you gonna are you gonna have fun when you make 500 bucks or a thousand bucks are you gonna have fun when you make eight grand in one day i mean what's what is it gonna take for you to get the fun back that's a good question um, well you better think to, about it i'll obviously got to get it back haven't i i mean I, w I was happy that it was up that amount, but I just didn't book it on that day. And it was purely and simply because I didn't think it was going to continue. Wait, you're talking That's about Netflix? Help. Are you talking about Netflix? Yeah, Netflix. Yes. Yes. I mean, yes, I was happy at the Friday I, night. I think you better get out of your head about that because the market's very volatile. And even sometimes I think somebody's going to continue right away and it doesn't, even though I'm right a lot. Bottom line is, and when you're up a lot, you got to look at the money and you're not doing that. You need to be more consistent about where you're getting out. You're not doing a good job about predicting what's going to continue or not because I bet in your life you never would have thought Amazon would have gone over 1600 or you wouldn't have gotten out of it. So stop trying to predict the highest point that you could get out. Stop trying to say, well, I didn't get in at the lowest point when I get in. You just money manage the trades that you take and make money on the calls that I'm doing and kill the ones that aren't working where they're down 50% to save yourself to retake them if they reset back up. Find a happy medium that you can live with, holding them all or getting out of half or getting out of the whole thing. Find three choices you got, but either way, you better be consistent with what you're doing because when the big ones run, you're not going to be in them. And when the ones don't run, you're going to you're gonna be in them. I mean, this is, look, this is just what happened. You weren't in the queues, ran up huge. You weren't in Amazon, ran up huge. So, you know, and, and, and thank God you did get out of the spy. That was a really nice trade. You captured the gains. You made the great decision there exiting that on Friday. Um, you know, and, and I thought this would continue here, but once again, it probably still does. We'll just have to see where it does tomorrow. But the point is find a consistent way to do, and, and you have to think about how to get the fun back. You got to get the fun back and it's, you have to get the fun back right now because you're thinking, oh, now I got to, now I just lost this much money in this and now I got to take the next one. And now what's going to happen there, there, you're going to get, I'm going to call a million more trades this year. So don't worry about it, but you have to think right now and decide before the next trade I call how you're going to manage it because you're not consistent and also how you're going to get the fun back. You see, it's relating uh, how many you're going to call to what I'm going I to put know. on the side. I, I don't, I don't so, know. Like this last week, I, I did push it. I pushed it a lot and I had a lot on the table. So obviously, if you're calling a lot, then I need to, and I'm relating it to my size, I need to reduce my size for that quantity of options that could be on the table. Well, then me. figure it out. I mean, sometimes I, I, you know, like I said, twice this year I've called them in waves. That was just, but it's only been twice. But when it, when they have, they've, they've all worked. I mean, Facebook, I don't know yet, but you know, the rest of them did. Either way, the point is that you know, there, it's not going to be every week that I'm going to call them like that. But you obviously weren't consistent with that either. You did not risk three thousand dollars in a spy trade, and uh, you know, so you weren't consistent with your risk either. You were. I, I did. I did. I risked a lot in the spy trade. Oh, you did risk three thousand in the spy trade. I had 66 contracts. So so then did you get out of that with 100% flip around? Uh, I got out before really it really got going. I, I, I made decent money. I think I made 2,000 in that one. But I could have tripled that. See, see, I, you know, I mean, again, you have to decide this. You have to decide this. You have to decide what you're doing with this. Look, everyone, everyone that goes, you're getting out of early. And everyone that doesn't, you're not. You have to decide what you're doing here. You must. And then be consistent. Think about that today. Think about that tomorrow. And think about it before I call another trade so that you do the right thing the next time. There is no there is no wrong answer if you get out early and you're money in them. There's no wrong answer if you hold them because a couple are going to go and be massive trades. What is wrong is when you are doing different things with different trades and different risks and different exits. And invariably, like I said, you always choose to hold the one that doesn't go. And then you think that, that there's something wrong, but there's nothing really wrong. And there's nothing wrong with Netflix. I really, honestly, looking at this, if you had emailed me about this Friday, you know, this made a pop. It made a pop. It, it had a really strong move in March. This chart is not like Amazon. On the day, this is different than the way it's been. Amazon's been poo, 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 up, up, up. These charts don't look the same, but either way, it's still the point that you're up a lot of money and you should have got out with some profit, a hundred bucks. I mean, I, I break even, you know, it's, it's difficult to see you take a loss in something you were up three grand in. Yeah, you're right there. Bow to yourself.
yourself you're never going to do it again. Write it in blood. I, I'm yes. serious. I mean, I, mean, so honestly, I, I, I am serious. I, it does nothing to your soul when you lose. It just chips away no, at sometimes you. Sometimes you're going to lose. The trades don't work. Sometimes that's going to happen. It's just part of life. But you, you can't control that. You can control being up $3,000 and letting yourself lose $3,000. That you can control. So the things you can't control, there's nothing you can do. But that, that isn't most of the time. It's only a little bit of the time. And you can't be mad at yourself then. So you'll keep loving yourself every day. And you got to find a way to get tough and love yourself through these mistakes you're making. But how are you going to do it? You're going to vow to yourself that you're never going to do it again. Say, get angry. Say, I am never going to do this again. And oh, then I'm find yeah, the yeah, happiness definitely. back in trading. Find the joy. What makes you happy? Does it make you happy to see three grand on the screen? Does it yes. make you happy to have Amazon run up to the moon? Or does it make you happy just taking a trade in the morning at 10 and getting out with 500 bucks at 11. The one guy got out of that spy today. He made $600. He was happy as a clam. So what's going to make you happy? Making money. Simple no, as that. you have to be more specific than that because obviously making money doesn't make you happy or you would have got out of Netflix for $3,000. Like I say, I was following the chart and yes, on the Monday, I should have been out of it. But... I just didn't think it was going to come back so far. I didn't, I didn't think it was going to go a little further. And that was my problem. If I'd seen that, if, if, if you go by the money, then on Friday, be out. Take the money. I have previously taken the money, like I said before. I don't think you're good enough at reading charts to determine it by the chart. I don't think you are because I would have looked at this and I would have said that was a pop-up. It was a breakout pop up that just broke out for the day. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have said this is gonna run up for five more days. I wouldn't have said that. I mean it's hard to look at it now and say that obviously, but I can see the way it traded in the first week of March. It's not the same as Amazon and it did not have to continue and it will continue, but now who's to say where? This could pull all the way back to 300 or 270 before it goes up again, or it could pop over tomorrow. This has had a huge, massive move. You're, 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 you're looking at it too much in a vacuum. You gotta look at this stock since the gap up that happened in the earnings back in the middle of January, and then I gotta go after this, but look at, the, look at that gap up. The stock gapped up. You know, I don't know how many points did it gap up here. Let's just see. Close to 227, open. Yeah. So it opened, it gapped up 30 points. Gapped up 30 points, held, held, and has run up 100 points. I mean, what do you want? I've called a bunch of trades in this already. I don't know if you did all of them or made money in all the ones I've called since then. But I mean, I've called so many in this. They've all worked. I mean, what do you want from the stock? There's no, there was no reason to read this that this would keep going after that call last week. Forget about the market. This stock is tired. It is still higher, but I don't know when. It's, it needs a break. I mean, what do you want from this? Look what it's done. Yes. Yes. Okay, right. Listen, I want you to do well. This is your year. I really thought you were getting better. I still think you're getting better, but you can't give up on the day trading because it keeps you sharp. When you're in stuff, you got to look at it in the morning. If that means you don't day trade that morning, then fine, but you can't forget your positions. But either way, you need to come up with a consistent money management plan, number one. And number two, you need to figure out what you're going to do to make yourself happy because somewhere along the line, you're losing the fun of it. The fun is going out of trading for you and you got to find it back. I, I believe that you can find it back. But I don't, I don't know what that is going to be for you. And you got you to you find that back. Because when you do something and it's fun, it's even when you lose, it, you're not going to be so stressed out. It's like, well, things didn't work out as great as I thought that day. But I still love what I do. And that's kind of how you have to look at it. But if you are just miserable every day, even when you win, then it's like something's wrong. Yes. You're right. Okay, thank you. I really, I really hope you get these things right this year. I just, I told you, you should, you should sign up for mentoring sessions just to get with me when you have a position on and you're trying to decide to take it off. I mean, I, you know, I told you that. I said you, you could just do the mentoring sessions with me, and we'll do a session when you're trying to decide if you if if, if you should get out of it. And I, I'll tell I you, know, get out of it I know, not. I know. And if I've done the right thing this week, there would have been no problem. Absolutely. But I, I thought you got out of those on Friday when you emailed me. I was so happy for you. You obviously missed the bit I, that said 
unrealized. I, I, <laughs> I, I get a hundred emails a day. I get a hundred emails a day. I'm a, you know, I mean, come I on. know. I do. I expect you to see. I expect you to just scan and just glance. I, I really do. I can fully appreciate your position. I'm sorry. I should have said I am not out of this yet. I, I know it's my own. But if stupid. you had said that to me, I would have been like, "What are you thinking?" And would you have yeah. gotten out? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you'd have said to me, "What are you doing in that?" You know, you should be out. I would have been out of it, Melissa, most definitely. But I said congratulations. When I said congratulations, what did you think I was congratulating you for? Taking the trains? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're trades I call, obviously. I mean, it's like, doesn't, I mean, the, 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 the brain power comes, the, 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 the you're, I'm just going to say one thing and I got to go. The brain power comes is you have to decide what to do after, after I call the trade, after you take it, then it's yours. It's your baby. Of you have to take of care course. of that baby of and you have to decide what to do with that baby. If you just throw the baby in the mud, then, I mean, come on. That's why I look at other things to give me an idea of where something's going in the future. Well, which is they're where... not helping you. And you can't ignore the money even if you are, even if you are looking at other things, which you find helpful, which I disagree. But even if you do, you can't ignore the money. Correct. Thank you. Write up some kind of plan of action for yourself and stick to it before yes, the I next will. trade is called. And we'll right. watch Facebook and see what it does. I have no idea here. I, I really, really don't. But if this fails, then I'm sure it'll set up again. Same thing with the spy for sure. And obviously you're out of the Netflix. And we'll see. We'll see. There's going to be tons more trades. I just think that you have to be more consistent with what you're doing. And you got to find the fun back for yourself in trading. And I don't know what that is. But I really, really seriously think that you need to think about that. I do. Yes, thank you. I do. All right, it was good talking to you, Philip. You too. All right, have a good Take day. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.